Hi everyone, Rachel Moore here. Today I'm going to walk you through how to create the hero story or storytelling in your content marketing. Uh, the, this is a basic skeleton. I'm not the only person sh sharing this knowledge. Very much inspired by Duarte, um, which is a great resource for uh, storytelling. But also these are just the fundamentals that can help you bring a concept to an audience through marketing uh, by developing your messaging. But before you develop the message, you've got to know your hero and what you're trying to get them to do and then how you are the perfect thing or brand to do it. So let's dive in. I'm going to share my screen here. So uh, I used a free Marrow board account to really draft out a skeleton here. And this is something I've used to develop the storytelling or craft the story of uh, an ICP or an ideal customer persona that we are trying to say, hey, that's the person we're going after for this product or service. Now, uh, this is again relevant mostly to B2B content marketing. So we're talking about products or services. If you have actual tangible tactile things you're giving to people, um, that can get a bit easier. But when you're talking about something nebulous or a little more conceptual or something that's kind of hard to see and touch, uh, this comes in super handy. So we're going to walk through all of these different facets. And again, this is merely a skeleton. You're welcome to use it. Um, if you have your own things you want to kind of use to develop your story, uh, your storytelling for your content marketing, go for it. But these are the base, the bare bones that I think are really important. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to zoom in. So first of all, we want to meet our hero. Now your hero if you think about it in marketing, what are your goals? You're trying to sell. You're trying to lead, gener um, generate leads into your sales so that they convert someone into a customer. So technically your customer is your hero. They're gonna, they're gonna save the day for you. But in this scenario, they're your hero. That's who you want to identify. So you have a specific person. If you're, if you know already what that title or that segment of the market is, that is your ideal hero. Um, you know who that is. Well, now you've got to drill down into who that person is. But you need to define that person or persona first. So meet your hero. Uh, let's say it's like a marketing leader or something like that, or whatever. You can pop that into the blank there. Well, now you need to take the time to drill into all the different aspects. What makes your hero tick, right? Who, how, what is, what forms that hero? What are they comprised of? So your hero has a lifestyle. Um, they probably have certain activities they like to do. Cause remember, even if you're doing B2B marketing, you're not marketing to a logo or a business per se. You're marketing to the people in that business, probably a specific smaller group of people. So we need to know what makes those people tick. What is their lifestyle? Um, you see some prompts under here. How do they act, spend their time, their values, what's important to our hero for their personal self and for those in their circles. Like what, what really matters to them. They're happy when this thing is fulfilled. They're unhappy when it's not present. What are the hero's circles of influence? Who influences our hero? Who helps inform their own decisions and their way of life? Uh, and in turn, who do they influence? What does our hero know? What are they an expert in? Uh, what, are, what could they talk at length about and even work in and be successful in? What do they know? Um, our hero's respect. Not only who respects our hero, but who does our hero respect? Who would our hero give the time of day to say, hey, that might influence the way I'm going to go one way or the other. And then, of course, our hero's desires. What do they want? Um, at the end of the day, when they finish a work day or work week, what is going to make them go into the weekend going, yes, uh, I made things happen this week. So think about that. So those are all components to meet our hero. We should have a, a pretty decent idea of what this person is all about. Well, guess what? Our hero has a problem, whether they realize it or not. Now, marketers, you know, this is where we come in. We're like, well, you do have a problem. You have a pain point. And whether you know that you have a pain point or not, I'm going to tap into that pain point. But before we tap into that, we need to define what that pain point or problem is. So if we know, okay, we're coming around and use this takes a little reverse engineering from what you provide as a product or service, but you're trying to say, okay, we're going to solve this for this hero. Well, if we're solving something for them, they already have a problem. So now here's where you need to define it. What is the current point of view of our hero as it relates to this problem? Like, do they feel hopeless about it? Do they like, if only I could do it, I just don't have the, the resources, the budget or the people or the goodwill in my company, or I don't have enough skill in it, whatever that problem or point of view might be, their current state. What are the risks if this hero can't solve the problem? Are they gonna get fired? Um, are they gonna lose control over the department? Are they 
going to have negative reviews come in about their company or something like that. Something's going to be impacted negatively. These are the risks. And then does our hero, and let's, let's use our imagination here. I bet our hero has an idea and like, you know, I could fix this. I could fix this whole problem if I had this or if I could do this. So that's where we're like, that's their big idea. Okay, now this is going to directly help uh, inform these next steps. So we know our hero has a problem. And as many people do when they have a problem, it's not like they don't know they have a problem, but they are feeling the effects of it almost every day, if not weekly and whatnot. Um, well, that means we need to prompt this person to change something, right? There's something that needs to change in order for this problem to get solved. So that's where we're going to call them to a new adventure. Maybe these days they're behaving in a certain way and you know, they're, oh, well, I do all these actions all the time, but I get the same result. What's that? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing all the time with, but expecting a different result. That's where they're stuck. So they're behaving in certain ways that are not solving the problem. Well, we need to get them to believe that there is a new way to do this that will solve the problem, but it is going to take uh, a bit of action, but they need to believe first before we get them to that action part. Well, let's head there. So now, now that we've got them, okay, I believe I can make a change here and stop behaving the way I was. So we've got to get them out of that comfort zone then through a push or a pull. You can do with it, play with this however you want. Do you want to pull them, entice them into something? Are we also simultaneously pushing them out of their comfort zone? So what is their comfort zone? Where are they? How are we going to push them out? And then how are we going to pull them into success where now the problem has a hope of being solved? All right. And lastly, the way we get to all this is your hero needs a mentor because maybe they know all these things they need to do. But before we get them into the process of where they can accomplish this, we need to introduce introduce them to the person. Now, I had uh, one of my prior uh, managers put it this way to me because she knows I love Lord of the Rings. Uh, Frodo needed Gandalf in order to be able to get put on the mission. He got pushed out of his comfort zone and he had to go accomplish a mission. He had to solve a pain point that was not only going to be felt by him, but by everyone around him. But he needed Gandalf to do it. So think of it in that term. Now, maybe that's not Lord of the Rings for you. Maybe there's some other story out there that has this kind of mentor, the kind of the catalyst person who's like, I'm always giving you what you need to move forward and to help solve this problem. I know the problem and I know what needs what's needed to solve it. So what, uh, what characteristics does the mentor have? And remember in this scenario, the mentor is you, it's your brand, it's your product or service. You're the mentor. Okay. So that's where you come into play. This is the part where we get to talk about you. Before we do, notice how much time we spent talking about our hero, AKA the customer. This is where so many brands, whether it's to B2C or B2B, get this wrong. They think they need to jump all the way to here. This is their marketing. No, this is not how we do content marketing successfully. It is a portion of it, but notice that the foundation of it, where we started the first four steps here, which were pretty rigorous, are all about the customer first. This is about the hero. Before we even get to talking about us and where we figure into our hero's life, we are caring and learning about our hero, the customer. All right. Yes, that's important. And I did put that weight on it because it's important. But once we do get to talk about us as the mentor, we need to hover on a few things. We have shared experiences between the hero and the mentor. This anytime, if you notice, you talk to people, if you find some commonality, oh my gosh, you're from, you're from Appleton, Wisconsin too. That's where I used to live at one point. Instant commonality. That is that person now has a bit more of an in with you and there's more credibility there. So we want to figure out what are the shared experiences between us, the mentor and our hero, the customer, what are the common goals? We're likely like, well, we want to fix this. We both want to fix this. We both want this to be better and have better outcomes. We want people to feel better or have a certain way of life. That's better than what it is today. Common goals. And lastly, what are the qualifications? Now, this is where we get to talk a lot about us as the mentor. How are we qualified to help? Well, I mean, if we develop a product or service that can actually meet the needs and solve this pain point, we're qualified. And here's all the things and all the experts we have on hand, our teams that are helping make, bring this product or service to working. Um, we have a ton of qualifications to offer. All of these things support why the hero should trust us as a mentor. And as they start partaking of our product or service and finding that success, they get rewards. Um, 
there's three types of rewards. First of all, how does the hero directly benefit from having us in their life? Having the product or service now solve that pain point? Um, is it a promotion? Is it more revenue for their company that then turns into accolades for them? Do they get recognition? Do they get more time off? Do they have more of a work-life balance? Does, do they have less anxiety in their day now because we were able to solve something for them? So all of these things matter. Remember, if you go back to what is important to the hero and we know what is important to them and what values they have, um, what their desires are, can we then at the end of this say, well, we helped meet those desires. We helped fulfill those values for the hero, direct benefits. But that's not all. We also want to say, well, how does, how do we, are we benefiting the hero's sphere? So this is probably their team members, their department, the stakeholders that care about their performance and success. Um, what we're doing is has a halo effect. It's not just going to reward the hero. It's going to have a far more far reaching impact as well. And even beyond that, do we have something that benefits the entire world? Like if, and this is where we can get into in our messaging, a bit more aspirational. Um, what are we doing that's actually having a positive impact on a way larger sphere of people? And that is the world. Are we providing a benefit that has way more lasting consequences and reach? Those are selling points, especially these days where people are caring more about causes and big picture and long term. Those are some important things to realize. So again, this is just, this is a skeleton structure for how you can develop your customer slash hero story, but then how do you put your messaging and how do you insert yourself into their story as the mentor and the person that's going to solve their problem? I hope this was helpful. Happy to answer any questions about um, how you might want to fill out any of these fields. Uh, I may make this available too if you all just want to like have it printed out and then be able to fill it in yourselves. Um, you know, copy paste it into your own free mirror board. Go for it. Uh, but enjoy it. I hope this is helpful and let's be better storytellers in our content marketing. Hit subscribe on this channel if you find this or other videos helpful or relevant and uh, have some fun storytelling everybody.